Okay, I'm back, and I'm kind of excited today, uh, even though the subject matter is very serious. As you can see, I've got my sleeves rolled up because of uh, all the talking I've been doing the last few days. It's time to stand and deliver or shut up, and I'm definitely going to deliver today on my promise. Um, I want to clarify a couple of things that I said yesterday so you get a clear image of really what I meant because I'm talking really fast and sometimes I really misspeak what I'm trying to say. I, I, I get a point across and you pretty well understand it, but it's really not quite accurate. Um, for one thing I said yesterday, that your spirit was sick. That's really not true. I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying when I say your spirit is sick, you know, you're sick, your psyche is sick and everything. But, you know, I got to let you in on a little secret. Your spirit ain't sick. You, you're not going to mess with your spirit. You're not going to touch it. You're sick because you're trying to lay some things on your spirit and it's not having it. It's basically let, letting you know that it's not having it. And that's why you're so sick and why you're hurting so much is because of what you're trying to do to it. It's not, you know, you're not doing anything to it. It's, it's doing it to you. And, you know, and, and I also want to clarify this God spark thing that I spoke about. You know, it, I really feel that. I feel like this little spark of life, this spirit, this soul, is, you know, it might be the smallest of particles of God to, to him. But to us, it's, it's huge. It's, it's, and, and the reason, and, and this is my own personal opinion, you're not going to find it in any theology I don't believe that I've read so far, but, but this spark that he gives, the reason that man gets in so much trouble, in my opinion, is because it's kind of like having a nuclear reactor powered ego and pride driven by a fleshly indulging selfish body so i mean it's pretty hard not to get into trouble you know with that kind of power you know inside such a small motive that we have which is self which is us that's basically what we're all concerned about is us and so, yeah, so I say, you know, that's why I say I think it's normal if you get into a little trouble with this because, you, you know, you're, you're really not going to be a very good pilot for this nuclear reactor powered body, <laughs> you know, so uh, that's good. So, so let's get right into the addiction thing that's really going to help you, you know. Very serious subject matter. I, I got to tell you that this is most likely, and I can't see why it wouldn't be, the biggest battle that you're going to be in in your life. Um, and having said that, though, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Can you imagine after you've won this battle, it's basically downhill. I mean, you're never going to face anything that you can't conquer. This is, this is, I mean, this is big. This is the biggest, you know. And, and, and i got to let you in on a little secret. It's something you already know. It's going to hurt. You know, it's going to hurt. But it's not going to hurt as bad as you think it is. Because you've never really faced it, you've never really pushed into the pain, you've never really gotten to the point to see that it's not going to get any worse than this, you know. And, and you know, also I want to let you in on a little secret. You know, you say, "Oh well, if I could just quit for for a week, if I could just stop doing whatever it is I'm doing, which we know what we're talking about, for 30 days, you know, I I beat the physical addiction and I'll be free." Man, you won't be. You won't be. You will be, you'll be right back is what you'll be. If there's not something else besides the abstinence from the drug or the alcohol, you really haven't accomplished too much. Your eyes are not even open. Your ears are not even open after 30 days. Believe me, you're still just the same insane person you were after a month. It takes plenty of time afterwards. So don't go into this thinking, oh, if I could just stop for this amount of time, I'm home free. No, you're not. You're not home free. And so that's one one bit of advice. So you know, so and, and we're going to get on to a lot more mechanics. You know, I, I can only do so much in five or six minutes. But, but one thing I really want to talk about today is is the committee. And, and if you don't understand what the committee is, I want to explain it to you. It's the obsession to do what you do. It's a committee meeting that's in your head. It's all of your opinions and your values and your experiences and your thoughts and your beliefs. And they're, and they're all, so picture them all sitting around a table. There's like a hundred members around this table. And they're all arguing their points of view and throwing shoes at each other. And, and it's this big meeting. And basically what this meeting is, is about your destruction. You know, it's all the reasons why you should use today. It's all the reasons why you can't not use. You know, why you can't quit. Why you can't make it. 
I got interrupted there for a second, but it's all, it's all the reasons why you can't make it. And what I want you to understand about this disease is it knows everything you know. It knows you weller than you know yourself. And I got to tell you another little secret too. Satan is sitting in in this committee meeting. You know, I believe he's behind things like addiction and alcoholism. I, it, that's his game. His game is selfish self-indulgence. You know, that leads to death, that leads to destruction, that leads to the misery of man. You know, he's got his hand in all that. So you better believe that he's sitting in on that meeting. And what I want you to realize is that that means there are smarter entities than you sitting in at this meeting. So if you think you're going to outthink them, if you think, in other words, you're going to sit there and win this argument, this debate, that you're going to face down the committee and you're going to come up with, with reasons to satisfy all their objections and all their ideas, you can't. You won't. In my experience, you won't. What will happen is you'll get worn down like you always do. You know what I mean when I say that. You real addicts and alcoholics know that eventually your will gets weak. Your willpower goes on empty, and you just get tired. And you just can't face the committee anymore. And it's like, okay, committee, I give. I'll do it. I'll go for the relief. I'll go hide. You know, I'll fight another day. And you're going to, and you're going to lose. And, you know, and you're sitting there thinking, uh, I hope you're thinking, well, what, 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 what do I do? What am I going to do? I got this big committee, and there's no way I can out-argue them. There's no way I can out-think them. There's no way I can outwit them. That's good. I'm glad you're thinking that because that's the point. You can't. I want you to admit that you can't. I want you to admit, and here comes the practical advice, the stuff I told you, the, the real help. Admit to yourself, you're an addict. You can't stop using. I'm an alcoholic. I can't stop drinking. Admit it to yourself. And later, and hopefully maybe even now, admit it to God. Go to God with this. Take God this problem. You know, I, I know in the beginning you're not going to be able to kneel in front of your bed like a good little boy or girl. But if you're laying in your bed at night before you're going to sleep, you know, just take that to God and say, God, I'm an alcoholic and I can't stop drinking. I'm an addict and I can't stop using. You've got to do it for me. You've got to help me. You've got to bring God to that committee meeting. That is your only protection. That's your shield. That's your armor that's going to win that argument with the committee. Believe me, God can win the argument. You know, matter of fact, i got to tell you, what happens is, I'll let you know, since I've been there, I've been in these meetings, when God shows up at the meeting, everybody shuts up. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's, it's quiet. And that is such an amazing, amazing experience when the committee goes and recess. It's not God. It's still waiting on you, but it's but it's like not in session. You know what a miracle and blessing. And thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that. And, and those that it, that it hasn't been revealed to you, it's not real. I, I don't expect you to believe and understand all this. You know, but what have you got to lose? You know, really, what have you got to lose by trying it? And that's some really practical experience that I'm giving you today. You know, uh, surrender. That's what, that's what it is. Surrender to the fact that you can't do it. And, and, that's, and that's really good because, you know, when you finally admit that you can't do something, you get to stop trying. Think of all the energy you get to save that it's not your responsibility to beat it anymore. Man, that's like, oh, God, I don't have to worry about it anymore. You know, I, I don't have to try to do that anymore because I can't do it. You know, you can finally surrender and set back and let the one who can do it, do it. You know, that's, that's my practical now. Now, if you really want just like some day-to-day -day instructions on what you should do, what, what can I do today to start that walk, I'll tell you what you can do. You can get dressed. Get dressed in whatever clothes appropriate to go outside and go for a walk. And take a walk. Go out and take a walk down the sidewalk and have a conversation with God. And, and for those that say, well, man, I don't believe in God. I don't know nothing about God. What is it? Then have a discussion like this. You know, God, if you're there, 
If, if there's anybody there, I don't know if there's anybody there, but, but I really don't have anything to lose at this point. And, I, and I'm really willing to try anything, you know. So, God, if you're there, you know, I want you to know this and I want you to know that. And, and, and talk to Him as, as, as I'm talking to you. You know, open your heart. It's not like, like He doesn't already know, but it's a process. It's something that, that He requires. You know, God is a gentleman. He doesn't go where He's not invited. So invite him into your life, invite him into your heart, and, and I guarantee you, he'll show up in that committee meeting, and he will shut it down.